on Larry King now, Jim Belushi. Comedy really is drama. I mean, the characters you play in comedy have to really be committed, and maybe they're just a little bigger. Then all of a sudden, I became in the top five. For the part. For the part, and I went, oh, great. They're going to give it to John Goodman. What was Woody Allen really like to work for? He was lovely. He was gentle. He was sweet. And there was only two things that you could really talk to him about. Jazz or baseball. What's something people get wrong about you? Uh, my name. <laughs> they call me John, they call me Bill. Look at Bill Murray. Plus, secret talent. Uh, I play harmonica. Guilty pleasure. I play harmonica. Let me hear. <laughs> All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, our special guest today, actor, comedian Jim Belushi, who's capping off a momentous year with acclaimed roles in Show Me a Hero, Good Girls, Revolt, and Twin Peaks. And Jim now stars in Woody Allen's latest Wonder Wheel, alongside Kate Winslet, Juno Temple, and Justin Timberlake. Wonder Wheel is in select theaters now. It opens nationwide December 15th. What's it like to work with Woody? Well, Woody is, uh, you know, he's a master. He's, he's 81 years old. And David Lynch, I think, turned uh, 79 or 80 when I was shooting with him. And and you, you're, you're a young man. You're in their group. 84. 84. And, uh, it's, you sit among greats. I sit among greats. <laughs> and I'm so, I feel so good because they're, you guys are all visionaries. Is it true that Woody gives you only the part of the script you will be in? Uh... I used to hear that you, since you didn't know what characters were doing when you weren't in the scene, why did you have to see the scene? Well, he, he only gives you the part of the script uh, that you're going to read for when you, when you meet with him. But then once you get the part, he does give you the whole script. David Lynch, on the other hand, only gives you the scenes that you're in. And sometimes you don't even know what scene you're going to shoot the next day. I mean, it was really top, top secret. I mean, it was really interesting to watch Twin Peaks this year because I had no idea what it was about because I'd never <laughs> read anything except for my little scenes. It was very good. Did Woody call you? Did you have to audition? How did it happen? Well, it started with uh, my agent um, saw the breakdown of the characters and it said a Harry Brock type. And I did Harry Brock from uh, Born Yesterday on Broadway a few years ago. So my agent called and said, well, you're looking for a Harry Brock type. He just did it on Broadway. It's a great character. Yeah, uh, Broderick Crawford. Wow, uh, it was a great. Judy Holiday. what a Paul great Paul Douglas movie. did it too. Yes, yes. So um, they said no. And then he sent some footage from... Uh, from a couple of films I did in the uh, David Simon piece on HBO. And then all of a sudden I became in the top five. For the part. For the part. And I went, oh, great. They're going to give it to John Goodman. But then uh, all of a sudden uh, I, they, they said, uh, what do you would like to see you? Can you fly into New York? You'll meet him. He'll give you the script. You'll get 15 minutes to read the, script, the pages and then you'll do it. And that's what I did. I went in. Yeah. Now, Wonder Wheel, I grew up in Bensonhurst. Woody grew up in, in the Flatbush area, but Wonder Wheel is Coney Island. It's set in Coney Island. The apartment that Kate and I live in is above the shooting gallery. It was like a little dance hall that I they kind of... Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. your wife? She plays my wife, Ginny. She's terrific. Well, tense Almost, for you? Yeah, it was intense. Uh, it's an intense script. And, uh, What's it like working with Kate? Oh, she's a doll. She's a thoroughbred, a real pro. I mean, uh, she uh, really, it was a joy working with such a... Now, the film has gotten off to some bad reviews. How yeah. has that hit you? I don't really read the I reviews. Never miss, I never miss a Woody Allen. I haven't seen it yet. I really don't read the reviews because, uh, I, you know, I'm an Academy member and I get screeners and I watch all the screeners and... Some of these screeners, some of these movies get bad reviews. I watch the movie and I go, what the hell? What, what were those bad reviews about? It's a damn good movie. I sat with a critic once at a screening at a comedy. And he, I won't even mention his name, he was laughing his head off and wrapped it. I don't know. I, I, I think, I, I, you know. But some, some of the criticism has been, I haven't seen it, don't even know the plot. 
that it's close to Woody's life. Oh, I don't know about that. I wouldn't say that. No. I think it's it's closer to uh, it's closer to a Tennessee Williams play or an Arthur Miller play. It's actually very theatrical in that sense. That set looks like a, a Broadway set. Uh, it, the scenes are done in one shot and they're long. They're, it, it was very reminiscent of you know Playhouse ninety type of. Uh, I mean, Woody really captured that feeling of the fifties, not only time wise. But theatrically, the way things were shot back then, and the feel, I mean, it's a very unique feeling thing. You, you, uh, you literally walk out going, wow, that was like an Arthur Miller play or a Tennessee Williams play. Did you shoot in Coney Island? We did. We shot in Coney Island, which was really cool. We shot uh, in the studio, and we shot on the streets of Brooklyn. And it, it was... Well, yeah, you grew up in Chicago, right? Chicago, Illinois. Yeah. Home of the world champion Chicago Cubs. Previous year. Previous year, thank you for making that this thing. You started in the Twin Peaks revival earlier this year, and you told it before. You had no idea what it was? Well, I didn't even know when I met on it. Uh, I, I was told to uh, go to the valley, to this address, and it was kind of a warehouse district, and I was nervous about my car, parking it. And Did you know David Lynch? I didn't know what it was. I went in, and I said that you're going to be videotaped, and uh, these girls are going to talk to you, and then that's it. And I said, well, what's it for? He says, well, I can't tell you. Just go. So I walk in. I thought this was, I thought, okay, this this is a porn film. I mean, <laughs> I am in the, the valley. There's two girls here. There's a camera. <laughs> and she just interviewed me, and then I found out a couple weeks later that I had the part for David Lynch's Twin Peaks. I had and no idea you, what the part was. Who did you play? I played one of the, uh, there were two brothers, me and... Uh, and David, uh, and we played uh, casino owners. Why was it all so secretive? David is that way, uh, but I think uh, the climate has always, I mean, has lately been that way with everybody because of the internet. I mean, you know, uh, Quentin Tarantino, uh, Hateful Eight was on the internet before he even sold the damn thing. So people, uh, creators are very tight with their scripts and they, they don't let anything out. They don't want it on the internet. They want it, the audience to view it mm. as a surprise. Woody Allen's for Amazon now. This film is Amazon, right? Yes. What's it, is it any different working for them? Amazon? Yeah. They're very lovely. They're very lovely and very supportive of the film and uh, it's nice that they are uh, supporting in, in such a big way. Your career is in a good shape now, don't you think, Jim? Well, I would say you're in... Doing all right. Lynch, Allen. What's left? What Are you now... Do you like serious as much as comedy? Uh, sure, uh, you know, drama... I, you know, Larry, comedy really is drama. I mean, the characters you play in comedy have to really be committed. And maybe they're just a little bigger. You know, uh, but uh, it's always been kind of a dramatic approach on comic characters. Comedians make good actors. Yes, I believe Not that. all actors are good with comedy. No, I mean, look at uh, Jackie Gleason in uh, The Hustler, uh, oh, yeah. Soldiers in the Rain. I mean, even uh, Steve Carell, you know, he oh. was a Second City guy. He was on Colbert, a great comedian, 40... Your old virgin, and uh, he's doing great dramatic work. Yes, I think, so, I think comic actors are natural. Have your goals changed over the years now, Jim? Ah, I just take each gig at a time. <laughs> One gig well, what's, time. what's Jim Belushi and the board of comedy? Oh, you've done your research, Larry. No, my producers. Oh, have. what? You, they're a crack staff. Crack staff? Here. They don't use crack, but they're uh, a crack staff. I'm so glad to hear they're not using crack. Because the rumor was when I came that there might be a little crack in the table here, but there's nothing here. No. Anyway, the board of comedy is, uh, you know, I'm a Second City alumni. And Second City is an improvisational theater in Chicago. It started in the 50s with uh, Elaine May and Mike Nichols and went all the way through to like. You know, Peter Boyle, my brother John, Bill Murray, all the way to Tino. Shelley Berman. Shelley Berman, what a great... great. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm a graduate also, and I went to Saturday so Night what's Live. what's the board of comedy? Well, the board of comedy is a collection of uh, four of us. That uh, One was Larry Joe Campbell, who was on According to Jim with me. The four of us uh, go on the road, and we do improvisation. We play performing arts centers, we play casinos, play corporate events, a lot of corporate events. Improv, did they, did they always hit it, I mean, or did they bomb? Did they ever bomb? Improvisation has that risk. 
Uh, we never bomb, the four of us, because we're old pros and we know what we're doing, and we've had 11 standing ovations in a row. And that, those shows, those 11 shows, we made up everyone. Everyone was different. Uh, but yes, and you learn that when you start. You le When you're learning the craft of improvisation, you do bomb quite a bit. Why does Chicago have so many funny people? It's the Midwest. There's something about Chicago. Uh, it's the if Chicago had L.A.'s weather, the world would live there. It, uh, yes, that's true. Right? Yeah. I don't know what it is. I, I think it's the Midwest. I think they're very grounded. They have a great sense of humor. You know, I did uh, Pirates of Penzance on the road for 12 months one time. We played every city from San Francisco, Seattle, Chicago, D.C., Boston, Philly, New York. And the best audiences were in Chicago because they're not afraid to laugh. And so when you're doing improvisation or stand-up comedy in these clubs and you're learning, you have an audience that they laugh at everything. They're good-natured people. What was Woody Allen really like to work for? He was lovely. He was gentle. He was sweet. And there was only two things that you could really talk to him about. Jazz or baseball. And what was great was that when we were filming this, the Cubs were in the playoffs. So Woody and I got to talk a lot. <laughs> he, he pegged the Cubs. He said if they didn't play the Mets, then they got a real shot because the Mets always play the Cubs tough. And easy to work for or hard? Lovely to work for you. The best professional uh, environment that I've worked in, the highest standards, it's all about the work was always about the work. There was no chit-chat. From the PA all the way to Woody, everything was about the work, and it was just mm. lovely. Good to know. Yeah. Up lovely. next, Blues Brothers and Bucket Lists with Jim Belushi. We'll have more right after the break. Jim Belushi, uh, Wonder Wheel, alongside Kate Winslet and uh, Justin Timberlake. It's in select theaters now. It opened wide December 15th. You're one of, also one of the founding members of the House of Blues. Yes. What's your involvement with the company now? Uh, well, we uh, sold it to Live Nation, which was just uh, the best idea ever. Live Nation is one of the great entertainment companies in America today. Right over here. I mean, they are... They are killing it. They've brought entertainment to another level. Do you and Aykroyd p perform together? I just got off the phone with Mr. Aykroyd before I came on here. Yes, we do the Blues Brothers. We play, again, we play a lot of corporate events, uh, big casinos, benefits, we raise a lot of money. And we sing and dance. I dance with my big 6'4 Canadian friend. We <laughs> These two big guys dancing. You've singing. done a lot to keep your brother... Keep the spirit alive. What Keep... was John like? I don't really know, to be honest with you. He was always so busy. Uh, How much older was he? He was five and a half years older. So, like, when he was a senior in high school, I was in eighth grade. So it wasn't like we were hanging out a lot, you know. And then he went off and became this tremendous uh, entertainer and talent. Uh, uh, he, was, he was very present. Did you want to follow in his footsteps? Well, it was either that or follow my dad's footsteps was the restaurant business. And my dad lost his restaurant in 1969, or I'd be serving dinner tonight. So John actually showed another model, and I was so grateful for that. And uh, following his footsteps, I don't know, those footsteps are this big, yeah. you know, but I, you know. It's like walking you're in you're the snow. Right. I don't mind walking in them, you know. It's, it's comforting. You know? We play a little game of If You Only Knew. Who was your childhood celebrity crush? Oh, crush? Oh, the bewitched girl, Elizabeth Montgomery. Oh. When I was a kid. I mean, Secret talent. Uh, I play harmonica. Guilty pleasure. I play harmonica. Uh -oh. I always carry a harmonica. We're gonna get a little. I don't know. I don't know if I have it. I always carry one just in case there's a band. Let me hear. Oh. 
I got to jam with Joe Walsh at the House of Blues the other night. Wow. Because I had my harmonica in my pocket. You never know when someone's going to invite you on stage. I had the best time. Where'd you learn to play that? Oh, I just kind of picked it up after I saw John Mayo uh, when I was 16. I couldn't believe the notes he got out of that harmonica, so I went and bought one. I just started playing self-taught. What's the weirdest job you've ever had? So I'm at Second City in the touring company, and this cop in the neighborhood comes and says, you guys, me and my buddy Lee Ryan, you guys want to make 25 bucks? You know, this is 1976 or 77, 76. I'm sure. He goes, well, I got a friend who's a bookie, and he's going to meet with another bookie at this restaurant. And he wants the other bookie to think that he's got some muscle, and they're going to negotiate territories. He goes, all I need you guys to do is just sit in the restaurant while they talk. <laughs> so me and Lee were like trying to act as tough and as you know, gangster as we could. And they, they haven't showed up yet. And I'm looking at the menu and I go, oh, tapioca pudding. I love tapioca <laughs> <laughs> So I order the tapioca pudding. And I'm like, oh, this is really good. And they come in. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm supposed to be tough and I'm eating tapioca pudding. <laughs> so I'm like banging the tapioca pudding with the spoon, trying to look really mean eating tapioca pudding. <laughs> Yeah, they negotiated that. We got our 25 bucks. It was pretty weird. That's a pretty weird gig. I would say that's weird. Who would you trade places with for a day? Oh, my wife. Really? Yeah, she's got a good life. What film would you watch over and over again? I do watch over and over again. Uh, you know, when I'm watching TV and, you know, you go through, you know, it's Casino. You know, you oh, stop just want to see. Yeah, well, I said, we just want to watch one scene. I end up watching the whole thing. Yeah. You know, Godfather. I'm just gonna watch this one scene. Sharon Stone was incredible. Oh, she scene. was so good in that. And my favorite film, though, was Being There, that Peter Sellers. Oh, film. the best. Right. What's something you wish you were better at? Harmonica. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <we're back. laughs> well, although I liked it. It was good, but I could be better. What never fails to make you laugh? Uh. John Candy. Anytime oh. I see John Candy on screen. Lovely just, man. Oh, the, the, he makes too me young. Laugh. Left he too makes young. Me laugh. Something on your bucket list. What I'd like to do? Bucket list. Well, go to Japan. I've never been to Japan. Best compliment you ever got? Oh, uh, James Brown. When I first met James Brown. And he was so dramatic at the House of Blues, and he, he was called in, and he was there, and, and he he looked me in the eye, and I could feel, Larry, I could just feel, I knew why they call him a godfather of soul. I could feel his soul. And he looked at me, and he talk, talked to me about John. And he said, you know, your brother, when I couldn't get a job, he put me in the Blues Brothers. Your brother would come to the trailer and help me with my lines. Your brother was very special to me. And I see in your eyes that the spirit is there. And your brother is watching on you. And you're going to do great. And I just, like, almost teared up. I mean, he was so beautiful. Wow. What's something people get wrong about you? Uh, my name? <laughs> they call me John. They call me Bill. Bill. Bill Murray. They call you Bill Murray. Bill Murray. And I'm like, well, we're both from Chicago. We both went to Second City. We're both Cub fans. We both did Saturday Night Live. Uh, we both like baseball. I, I, I know. What should we pay more attention to? The uh, tens and hundreds of thousands of uh, unexamined rape kits in all these urban cities that have not been examined. What do you mean not examined? They're just sitting there. All, the, all these rape kits that they have, when, when girls report rape, they do a rape kit and they put it and they're just, they're just stacked. They don't follow them anywhere? Who's Sorry calling? about that. Who's calling? Is it Aykroyd? Who's calling? No, well, I thought it was, but it's not. It's my agent. I guess I just got another job just from this interview. I <laughs> uh, tell me something we don't know about you. Oh. Oh. Uh. I sleep with donuts. 
You what? <laughs> I have a little donuts by my bed. When and I wake up at night. You eat a donut. I eat a donut. Oh. You should try it. Why? Um, I don't know. Sugar? Donut? It's better than drinking a shot of whiskey, yeah. it's, but it's the same feeling, I guess. Does your wife look over and say... Stop eating. P put a napkin on your... The sugar donuts on the sheets. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have social media questions for you. Okay. Brian Keith McDonald, would you return to Twin Peaks if David Lynch did another season? It would be an honor to return to Twin Peaks. Absolutely. I'm hoping David will do another season. Mark Webster, early in your career, you were in your brother's shadow. Now that you've had a successful movie and TV career of your own, what advice would you give your kids about being their own person? Well, first of all, I enjoyed the shadow because, you know, you think about a shadow, it's a shade, you know, and I love being in the shadow of my brother. And it guided me when I needed it, and I always carry him in my pocket. I carry my brother here, and I carry my dad here, and I enter into the world because the legacy of those men have brought me to where I am today. So they live in you? Yes, of course. Uh, Brenda Baron Christensen, we all have some type of routine in our lives. What's the first thing you do in the morning and the last thing you do leading to bed at night? First thing I do in the morning is, oh, damn it, I want to go back to sleep. Uh, and when I go to bed at night, it's like, oh, God, I get to go to sleep. <laughs> My, are my donuts here? Are my donuts? Where's my donuts? <laughs> Ross Richard, would you ever do a Blues Brother movie with Dan Aykroyd? Oh, I would, but I, I don't think that's possible. But we, uh, there, there's other media now to do Blues Brothers. In. Sherry Harold Gomez, Mr. Destiny is one of my favorite movies. I love that too. Like your character, is there one moment from your life that you wish you could change? One moment? Uh, I think there's maybe 120 moments. Which one? Is there one that jumps out? Oh, uh, yeah, but I can't really talk about it. <laughs> okay. Cody Joe Brown, is there still any type of character you wish to play, like in a period Western or bad guy in a horror film? You know what? I, th that's a very good question because I've never got to play a bad guy in a Western. And I've always wanted to do a Western because my father was a, wanted to be a cowboy, you know, and he, he had horses and cowboy hats. and So I've always wanted to do a Western. But, uh, that would be good. So you'll probably, based on this, you'll get it. I will get it. Uh, Quentin Bridley, is Twin Peaks a reflection of your own philosophical beliefs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a funny question. Uh, it's 18 hours of some unbelievable thoughts. And <laughs> it's a, that's a confusing question. Erzin, what was Tupac like? You worked with him in uh, Gang Related. I love Tupac. You know, Tupac was a studied actor. He went to high school performing arts. He was a musician, a writer. Uh, was one of the best working relationships I've had in, in Gang Related. Did they ever solve that? No, uh, I don't think so. But it was a tremendous loss. I mean... In Vegas, right? Vegas, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a wonderful, wonderful man. A great talent. Raven WPS, any plans for an According to Jim reboot or for you to do another multicam sitcom? Oh, uh, never know what's going to happen, but they actually have been talking about maybe doing a little reboot. Why did it work so well? Love, love, love. I'm telling you, we loved each other, that cast. Larry Joe Campbell was the funniest... Kimberly and Courtney were so beautiful and funny, and it was just, it was it was a great cast. And I have to say this, we had the best writers in TV. Is it running anywhere now? I think it runs on, you know, syndication. But you heard that, the best writers. Best. The best. Bubalina, who's your favorite comedian? My favorite comedian? Oh, well, it, it goes all the way back to, you know, Lenny Bruce and... I knew Lenny very well. Oh, God. He was my inspiration. Spent college. a lot of time with Lenny. Yeah. Uh, and finally, 8S MTV Forever. What has been the highlight of your career? They continue. Today is a highlight. Yeah, today is the highlight. I mean, they continue. Working with Woody Allen, David Lynch. 
You're a great man. Working with it. you oh. may be the highlight. <laughs> and the Cubs winning the World Series last year. And you'll be a bad guy in the Western. Thank you, sir. And I'll send you some donuts for your night's sleep. Thanks to my guest, Jim Bellucci. Wonder Wheel is in select theaters now. Opens nationwide December 15th. You can always find me on Twitter at King's Things. Don't pay attention to the critics. See it for yourself. We'll see you next time.